I wanted to show you guys this graph because this is the increase in views that this channel has had since uh, about February, since January, February, when we started doing this show. You can see how quickly and how, how impressively it's ramped up. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has been checking out the show. It's been uh, an awesome ride so far. I'm really enjoying doing these episodes. The thing I enjoy the most is the comments. The people who are asking questions, sending me requests, the emails that I'm getting every week now after an episode goes out uh, from people who are expressing their personal experiences. Uh, I had one guy who sent me, uh, I've had several people in fact, who sent me their portfolios uh, wanting my input on certain things. And it's awesome. I love it. You know, this is exactly why I wanted to connect with people and do this show. And I just wanted to start today's show off by saying thank you so much for all your support, for all the likes, all the thumbs up, all the comments, all the emails. Just the views themselves are awesome. Um, I'm enjoying the ride. I hope you guys are too. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the FTSE Show, episode number 32. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a company that has been requested, 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 requested so many times on the comments, on emails, all over the place, uh, Cineworld. And I thought to myself, why is everyone so interested in Cineworld all of a sudden? And then I saw the share price, <laughs> which is down to 56 pence a share. And I was like, ah, okay, that makes perfect sense. Everyone's interested in Cineworld because... They want to know if it's a bargain or not. Um, obviously, there's some issues going on with people not being able to go to the cinema right now. And uh, it's adversely affected their share price. The question is, is this uh, an outside impact on the company? Is this a very, very solid company that's been um, adversely affected in its share price purely because of the virus and because they've been closed? No one's able to go there. Or are there underlying enough issues going on with this business as well as that? In which case, that makes all the difference as to whether or not this is a bargain or whether or not it deserves to be down there at that sort of 56 pence a share. So that's what I went into this analysis with that agenda of trying to work out, is this a bargain or not? Are there any underlying issues? Uh, let's dive into the numbers and check them out. Okay, time to take a look at Cineworld Group PLC. Uh, Epic code is CINE. They're in the FTSE 250 index in the travel and leisure sector. So first thing that stands out for me is the revenue growth, which has been very consistent over the last, let's say, 10 years. Uh, and then we've seen a massive spike in 2018, 2019. Uh, and that was following the acquisition of Regal Entertainment, which is a massive jump for this company in terms of uh, size. Uh, and uh, they've uh, dramatically increased the number of screens that they now own uh, and have significant uh, uh, significant presence in the US. So uh, this is a, a much, much bigger company now. I mean, from 2008, looking at their just shy of 300 million revenue to the 4.3 billion revenue just some 12 years later uh, is a significant growth in revenue uh, and it's a great acquisition what a great acquisition for that company um, so let's go a bit deeper then into what's going on behind the scenes well gross margins relatively low uh, it's been sitting about on average about 25 26 percent a year uh, so the cost of sales are quite high the cost of sales eating up about 75 percent of the profit straight off the bat so uh, whilst that gr that growth in uh, revenue is is very exciting, they're still losing seventy five percent of that, and that figure has uh, maintained itself in twenty eighteen. But actually, we've seen an improvement in twenty nineteen, in so much that revenue has grown much faster than the cost of sales have, and in fact, the cost of sales have gone down somewhat, uh, 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 resulting in a gross profit of one point six billion, which is far higher than what they were getting before. Uh, far higher than the 2018 numbers as well. And so they're keeping about 37% slice of the pies of 2019, which is still low, but it's way better than what it was. And that may be you know, a sign of things to come moving in the right direction, perhaps. Uh, expenses are at a, a level that we would be comfortable with. Uh, as of 2019, 55%. Historically speaking, on average, we're looking at about 53%. 
uh, year on year. So, I mean, it's gone up ever so slightly, but still well within the regions of what we would be looking for in terms of uh, an efficient company with uh, with a good level of expenses relative to their size. So that's all good. No real issues there. Uh, and then we come down to the interest on debt. And now that's jumped, that's spiked big time. And that may have something to do. I, I haven't got all of the ins and outs of Cineworld. I'm just looking at the raw numbers here. Uh, but uh, obviously debt levels have gone up and that may have something uh, certainly to do with the acquisition of Regal Entertainment I would expect uh, debt levels up until that point you know we're sitting at 8.6 million 3.4 million 10 million by 2017 all very easily consumed figures then in 2018 following the acquisition up to 171 million now up to half a billion in 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 interest alone on debt so i'm expecting the debts to be relatively high that's taking up 75% of the uh, operating profit so that's really hurting them right now that debt level um, we'll look at debt in a bit more detail just to check that is the case uh, but when we come down to net earnings this is the impact that it's having so 2018 only 6.1 percent net earnings which is very average it's not bad but it's it's very average and then down to 3.3 that's when i start to really lose interest because that margin level is just too thin it's just not enough. 3.3% profit is very, very small. Of the 4.3 billion that came in, they're only keeping 145 million in profit. So it's very, very small, very, very tight margins. All you need is a spike in expenses or a spike somewhere else uh, to wipe that out and for them to have a losing year. And unfortunately, these numbers don't lend themselves well to strong share price growth. I haven't looked at the chart yet. We're going to do that in a moment, but uh, I would expect to see that these numbers not lending themselves too well to the share price. Uh, but as an investor, these are this is movement in the wrong direction for me. So since the acquisition, we've seen a real drop off in profits, and I would need to see evidence, i.e., fact, that these numbers are turning around before I could consider investing. I can't invest in a company. Uh, that might turn it round, that might have a great future ahead of it. Uh, many investors do, but those investors often lose money because they'll, they'll make predictions and they'll get it wrong. I'm not that kind of investor myself. I would rather wait to see evidence that things are going in the right direction and uh, they're ticking all my boxes. And unfortunately, we've got too many uh, areas here that just aren't quite right. The cost of sales still still being a bit too high. Uh, the interest on debt levels being far too high and the net earnings being too low. Uh, and unfortunately for me, that's not, not quite good enough. Uh, looking at the balance sheet then, we can see here that debts massively outweigh short-term assets. So short-term debts, uh, let's look at the current liabilities. Total current liabilities, $1.4 billion. Total current assets, only $400 million. So, yeah, massively outweighed there. And if we look at the um, short term debt borrowing, we're looking at 133 million. That's OK. That's not too bad. But when we look at debt levels, that's a massive concern for me. 3.4 billion of debt. That's obviously got something to do with the acquisition of Regal. Uh, yes, of course, the revenue has gone up considerably, but look at those debt levels. They've gone up considerably as well. It's a jump of 3.4 billion uh, from 2017 to 2018. And based on current earnings, because this is how we work out whether or not they're taking on more than they should be able should be should be taking on in terms of debt levels, because debt's relative, right? Um, depends on the size of the company and the amount of money they're making. Well, this is a company that's currently making 145 million a year in profit, and they've got 3.4 billion uh, debt to pay off. That's going to take them 24 years at current earnings power. That's a lot, and that puts me off considerably. <laughs> that keeps me well away from this company. That debt level is just far too high, and we got that clue, didn't we? When we were looking at the interest on debt, just on the interest on debt alone, it's costing them half a billion a year. Uh, they need to get that debt level down considerably. Now, last year, or in the last year, they've knocked that down by 400 million. That's a great start. Uh, but unfortunately, revenue fell uh, that year as well. And so we're now looking at 3.3% net earnings. And as a result of that, it's going to take them even longer to pay off still what's remaining. Uh, it doesn't give them a lot of profit. They're not making a hell of a lot of profit to be able to pay that off 
in the forthcoming years. So that's a concern for me. And again, I would need to see all this turning around before I'd even consider looking at Center World Group as an investment myself. Uh, I need to see signs of that debt decreasing for a few more years, I would say. And I'd want to see net earnings above probably 8-10% before I'd even consider getting involved because those numbers are all pointing in the wrong direction. All of these numbers are pointing in the wrong direction since their acquisition of Regal. Listen, it's a great acquisition, you know. They, they I, I love it when companies are buying other companies out and they're growing and they're using, you know, they're doing it in that way. It's very exciting if you're a shareholder uh, because there may well be great times ahead. But at the moment, we're not seeing any evidence of that. Yes, they've grown in terms of revenue, but all their costs have gone up as well, considerably, as well as the debt. And as a result of that, they don't really look to be in much of a better position. And as a result of that, they put themselves in a vulnerable position now where they're not making much profit and they've got considerable levels of debt outstanding. Now, there are many investors out there that are more than happy to invest in companies that they think are going to do well in the future based on what might happen or what someone says might happen or what the company's plans are. And that's fine. I totally get that, totally behind that, but that's just not how I do things personally. How I do things personally is I want to see evidence that things have turned in around before I jump on. Now, that can make me late for the party in comparison to other people, but the difference here is that there is a party <laughs> and there are many investors out there who will invest in companies because they hear something's going to happen or they get promised all these amazing things and they never come come to fruition and they ended up you know holding on to a company for six seven years waiting for this great thing to happen and it never materializes i want to see proof in the numbers that things are changing and at the moment with Sinner World, we're not seeing that change. We're not seeing those improvements. Yes, revenue's gone up dramatically, but so have the costs, so have the debts. And as a result of that, the actual profits have gone down since the acquisition. And that's not something I'm particularly keen on. Uh, retained earnings looking pretty healthy, I would say. 2.6 billion as of 2019. It has fallen about 16% in the last year. Um, but obviously, it did rise considerably from where they were at 224 a million back in 2017 so i would say those are very healthy retained earnings figures the return on shareholder equity isn't particularly strong the equity sits at 2.9 million um so to wrap this up before we move over to the chart i guess for me i'm all behind the acquisition i think it's great uh but right now we're seeing an increase in interest on debt we're seeing an increase on debt we're seeing an increase in costs uh, and we're seeing dropped earnings as a result of the acquisition. And so it may take them a few years to uh, to turn that around and to really make uh, turn turn their acquisition into a major benefit. Uh, and the future may be great for Cineworld, but for me right now, I need to see evidence that that is happening before I would become an investor. And until then, everything's pointing in the wrong direction now since the acquisition. And as a result of that, I would be staying away. Let's go and take a look at the chart. Okay, so historically, they've been a decent company to own, for sure. You cannot deny that. Uh, we go back to 20, 2008, where our, our kind of our numbers began, I suppose. We're looking at 57 pence a share back then. And they've definitely been a fantastic company to own from 2008 to let's say 2017 2018 where the share price made its way all the way up to about three pound 20. uh the acquisition happened in 2018 and we i would say we've definitely seen some improvement in share price over that period um, but then well before 2020 kicked in well before the uh the uh, virus kicked in uh this share price has been in freefall from about May 2019, so six months before the start of 2020, maybe even a bit longer than that, this share price has been dropping pretty damn quickly. And I, I imagine this is off the back of the release of some earnings, and the earnings obviously not being particularly good, going in the wrong direction since the acquisition of this uh, this US company. And uh, the share price has taken a right old tumble, and then obviously... Then the uh, the news in 2020, February 2020 came out and it's dropped their share price from 180 down to 57 pence. Um, now there's obviously an opportunity here in terms of the share price. This is uh, prior to the acquisition. 
in 2018. This is a company that have been doing very well in terms of share price growth. Uh, and we've knocked the, the share price has been knocked all the way back down to sort of 2008, 2009 prices. The, so there's an argument here that that's a very good opportunity to get in at a nice cheap price because this is a company that could well recover and do well in the future. But for me, these issues with the high, huge amount of debt and the 24 years it's going to take, take to pay them off based on current earnings, the fact that the earnings themselves have fallen, these are warning signs for me. And I'd have to see them turn around and go in the other direction before I'd start to consider this price to be a bargain. Because there's an argument here that this price is supposed to be down there. It should be down there based on the results that this company are currently earning. We can see that the share price had been falling. So investors haven't been particularly interested in the stock for quite a while now. And then obviously when the, the virus impact happened, it's dropped the price all the way down because no one's going to the cinemas right now. But where we've seen recovery with some other sectors, we've not seen that here. In fact, there's nothing here. There's really very little recovery in share price that may be telling us something here in terms of the way uh, big investors feel about the, the the outlook of this company. This is a company that have just taken on uh, a huge amount of additional expenses and now this has happened to them. And uh, listen, this is a company that they do have, what was it, 2.6, 2.4 billion in, 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 in retained earnings. Uh, but that's a huge amount of debt that they've got to pay off. So yeah, there's too many question marks here for me. This is not a this is not a write off. There is potential here, but I don't invest on potential. I invest in fact, and I invest in uh, evidence. I need to see evidence that uh, <laughs> that things are going to work out. Like I say, it will make me late for the party, of course, uh, because when that starts to come through, we'll see the share price have already gone up. But that's how I invest and it works very, very well for me. Uh, I don't invest in things like this because there's too much risk involved. Yes, there could be great reward off the back of this, but I've seen far too many people invest in things like this and not get anywhere. So, But it's just not the way I do things. And I admit and I understand there are many, many different ways to invest and many, many different ways to make money investing in these companies. All I can do is share with you the way I do things. For me, Cineworld have too many question marks and too many issues hanging over them for me to be an investor right now. Uh, give it a few years and let's see some actual change and turnaround in this company. Some very positive numbers, you know, growth. Uh, we've seen the growth in revenue, but let's see some growth now in profits, some significant growth to get us well away from that 3% margin that they're making. Uh, and if we can see that climbing closer to more 10%, I'd start to be very interested in this particular stock. Until then, they're going to score relatively poorly, I think. Okay, so a fair few issues there with Cineworld. And uh, over the last five years, that share price has fallen 75% in value. And uh, there, it's not just a case of the uh, 2020 crash. I don't want to say the word because it messes up the algorithm with uh, YouTube um, for some reason. They seem to, to flag everything that's, where this word is said, looking for fake news, I guess. Um, but the crash of 2020... Uh, the, the obviously this company have been adversely affected by that, but there are underlying issues there as well that were present prior to that even happening. And obviously this acquisition, I like the fact that they've made this big acquisition. I think it's a very positive move, but it's unfortunately hampered the actual financials, the actual numbers, the results. And until that turns around, it's an issue for me. Um, so, yeah, in terms of pricing, I wanted to talk about pricing, something I'm going to get into the habit of doing now on every show, I think, uh, in this segment, is talk about the price. Well, the price is of 56 pence a share. Um, it's actually a really good price for what you're getting in this business, not kind of forgetting where they might be going in the future. Um, if we look at earnings per share, sitting at about 13 pence a share. Uh, so if you're buying at 56 pence a share, then on a per year basis of earnings stays around the same level, you're looking at about a 23.2% return, essentially. So if you were to buy all of the, if you could afford it, buy all of the outstanding shares in Cineworld for 56 pence per share, uh, then your earnings per share would be about 20, your, your earnings, sorry, would be about 23.2% return on your investment. Uh, obviously, the return on investment being very important in terms of how much you spent on the share. So, um, 
yeah, 56 pence is a steal in that respect. Uh, we can also look at the price in terms of the assets that the company owns, how much assets you get in relation to the, the, the price you're buying for. Um, at the moment, based on the number of the, the, the equity of the company, so assets minus liabilities equals equity, split across the outstanding shares that are currently available, you're looking at £2.14 in, in equity a share. Uh, so that would price Sinner World's uh, share price at uh, a, a really good price, being about two pound fifty to three pound fifty a share. That would be a really good price. We can get it at fifty six pence a share. So price wise, just price wise alone, it is a steal. It's a really cheap, cheap price. The issue is all the underlying issues there, the problems there, the three percent net earnings. So if you've got real strong belief that you think Cineworld is going to recover and do very, very well in the future, then this is a great price to get in at. Uh, I'm not interested. Uh, there are better opportunities out there. There are great opportunities out there for companies that look far stronger that don't have that downward trajectory, that don't have the downward trend in financials, uh, that don't have the debt levels, you know, all the issues that are there. Uh, there are better opportunities out there for me, so I'm not going to be an investor here. But I could understand if someone was lured in by that 56 pence per share price. I honestly think, though, that uh, it probably deserves to be quite low down there. Um, and they haven't scored very well, unfortunately, because of the trends, because of the financials, nothing to do with the price. The price doesn't play any factor in any of these points here. The points here are all focused purely on the financial uh, performance of the company and the, and the factual information there, because the price analysis is somewhat opinionated, somewhat subjective, depending on how you want to work it out. Uh, but the, fun the fundamentals, the numbers, the financials are factual. Uh, and there's no opinion there whatsoever, really. Um, so, Cineworld. Unfortunately, we are getting the red pen out. It's just the numbers are just too poor, unfortunately. Uh, it's not atrocious. It's not terrible. They're not the worst company we've looked at. Uh, there is potential there, but I don't personally invest in potential. Uh, I want to see actual factual information and factual performance before I start to get involved. Uh, everything's going in the wrong direction for Cineworld and unfortunately it affects their score. They get a minus 23 points. Let's get them up on the board. So up there on the board in 21st place, uh, joint with Domino's, interestingly enough. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, just too many issues. Something that we're going to be doing every week now, obviously, as we add more companies to this list, is we're going to be knocking a company off. And unfortunately, the uh, Rolls Royce share, gone. Uh, just relegated. Just we just get rid of them. Um, <laughs> so that's it. Rolls Royce are gone, along with Dixons, who have gone as well. So, but not much more to say about Center World. To be fair, uh, I'm not an investor. I'm not someone who's interested in Center World personally. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they roll out keeping two meters apart. I mean, how are you going to pull that off in a cinema is going to be pretty tricky. I remember seeing an interview with uh, the head of uh, UK theatres. Uh, who was saying that the two meter distance isn't possible purely because once you have segregated everybody by two meter distance, you can only fill the auditorium by 20%. And if you're only getting 20% of people in on shows, the shows become uneconomical to run. They can't run them. It's not going to make any profit or run at a loss. Uh, and so you're going to find something very similar in the cinema um, situation as well. And so I'm not sure how Cineworld get out of this before this vaccine eventually comes out. I'm not sure how that is going to play out. Uh, so some concerns there from a from a short term practical point of view as well. Long term, when they start to produce better numbers and the net earnings goes up and the debt goes down and everything starts to look better, that number will change and they will start to move up this board and they'll get a better score. Um, until that happens, I'm not an investor. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.